we're in lecture two, homeostasis. When we talk about homeostasis, we have to talk about this gentleman. His name is uh, Walter Kennan. He's the father of physiology in America. And he lived about 100 years ago. He's a professor in Harvard Medical School. 100 years ago, uh, that's the time people still struggle to bring food on the table. In the medical field, they just study what's the name of the muscle, what's the name of that blood vessel. And he predict your body like to maintain a stable environment, and he called it homeostasis. And that's why he's the father of physiology. So he predict all this, and after 100 years, we still find his prediction is correct. So he become the father of physiology in America. So he talked about homeostasis, a stable environment. And he not just say, okay, we have homeostasis. He also predict what your body do to maintain homeostasis. That's why, what make him the father of physiology? He just not just say something, he, he really predict all this happens. He says, your body have a nervous system called autonomic nervous system. And that's still true after 100 years. So in your uh, unit five, the first lecture, we're gonna talk about the autonomic nervous system. And that's the one you could not voluntarily control. And they provide the tonic activity, so they constantly, they, they, they provide constantly feedback, like your blood pressure is const constantly be monitored, your blood sugar level constantly be monitored, tonic activity. They have the antagonistic control. Antagonistic means you have two systems. One can increase, the other can decrease. They're like yin and yang, one increase, the other decrease. So your autonom autonomic nervous system, actually you have the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic will increase your heart rate and parasympathetic will decrease your heart rate. That's the antagonistic control. And their effect depends on the receptor. So they release different neurotransmitters. And how your organs know it's a sympathetic or it's a parasympathetic because they use different receptors. So that's what he predicted 100 years ago. So now let's look at homeostasis. Definition, it's a stable environment. Your body want to have a stable environment. Because your body is a chemistry fab, thousands of chemical induction happen in your body. You don't want the temperature to change all the time. You don't want the environment to change all the time. You want to have a stable environment. So that's homeostasis. And to maintain a stable environment, you need these three components. You need the input signal, and you need a control center. Usually that's your central nervous system. Sometimes this is the endocrine system. And then they're gonna have output, and this output gonna maintain the stable environment. So you're gonna have a receptor, you can have the pick up the stimulus, you can have a control center and your two long distance communication system in your body, your nervous system, your endocrine system can do the function. Eventually you're gonna have a factor do the job. And the example we use is your, your body temperature. So say your body temperature increase. And apparently you need to have a receptor pick up your body temperature and it was sent to the control center. The control center is your brain. That's your hypothalamus, a brain area called hypothalamus. And when your body temperature increase, it's gonna send a signal to your sweat gland. So your sweat gland is your factor. And your sweat gland sweat, produce sweat. When the sweat go to the surface, uh, that's your skin. When it evaporate, we're gonna talk about the chemistry. You break the hydrogen bound, you break the bound, release energy, so the heat is released. That's why you sweat in the summer, to reduce your body temperature. So if you, we shut down this system, actually your body lose the power to, to fight for high temperature. It's like I shut down the, the fan of your laptop. It's very dangerous, you can, it can overheat. And it happens to people they lost in the desert for three days, and you found they have heat shock. And when you touch their skin, you found that the skin are totally dry, and the reason is they lose too much water. So eventually the brain say, okay, let's shut down the sweating system. And now their body is in a very dangerous state. It's like they, they shut down the weapon to, to fight the temperature. So they overheat, and there's heat shock. And your body wants to maintain a stable environment, homeostasis. So to maintain the homeostasis, you need all this. 
you need to have input and you need to have sensor pick up the the stimulus. And you have a set point. The set point like your body temperature is 99, uh, 98.9 or 99 degree Fahrenheit. And if the body temperature is too high, okay, you're gonna go to the effector, that's your sweat gland, and response, you sweat. And when you sweat, your body temperature drop. The output can be the input. They can detect the temperature. So when your body temperature drop back to normal, to 98, 99 degree, and you will stop sweating. You won't keep sweating until it keep dropping to 90 degree to 80 degree, and now you feel too cold. So we call this negative feedback loop. So these are the examples we talk about. Your body temperature is too high, hypothalamus make you sweat. When your body temperature is too low, okay, the output is going to go to your muscle, your skeletal muscle. When you contract your skeletal muscle, it produces heat. So that's why we, you, you, you shiver when you are cold, produce heat, and going to bring your body temperature up. So eventually you're going to be able to maintain your body temperature. And this can happen in your endocrine system as well. Like your body blood sugar level need to be maintained. So your blood, blood sugar level need to be maintained. And after you eat a big meal, you eat a lot of uh, carb, this carbohydrate. You eat cookies, spaghetti, rice, bread, candy, cake, everything make you happy. And you drink two big bottle of coke and refill three times okay now your blood sugar level is super high and what happens is your body releases insulin your pancreas beta cells release insulin insulin's job is to maintain to lower your blood sugar so it's mainly target is your uh, skeletal muscle you can ask your skeletal muscle take the blood sugar take the sugar in so they're not blood sugar anymore take the sugar from your blood and your blood sugar level drop to normal so that's insulin's function and while well, you're very familiar with diabetes, and that's when this system goes wrong. So diabetes patients have to watch the carb they eat because their body become, uh, either they don't have insulin, that's diabetes 1, or their body become insensitive to insulin, that's diabetes 2, and that's when this system goes wrong. And if their blood sugar level become too low, if you keep dropping, eventually they fall into coma and die, and your body won't let this happen, so they're, they're Still pancreas. Pancreas alpha cell can release glucagon. Glucagon is the hormone. Its function is to increase your blood sugar. You can ask go to your liver. Your liver turn the the glycogen. Glycogen is the polysaccharide uh, in your liver, and turn them into glucose. Glucose is monosaccharide, simple sugar. So then you can release this to your blood, and your blood sugar levels start to increase. So eventually your blood sugar level is maintained, so homeostasis. And all this goes through the negative feedback. So negative feedback is you have a set point, you are able to go either way to maintain the normal range. So the negative feedback maintain homeostasis, but your body also have the positive feedback. Positive feedback is sometimes you see people use the microphone and they're, they're, they come too close to the to the speaker and turn out the the sounds goes through the microphone goes through the speaker and being picked up by the microphone again so they keep being amplified and quickly you hear a loud sharp noise that's positive feedback very unstable so your body don't have too many positive feedback because this is unstable and your body want to have a stable environment so most of them actually 99% of the feedback loop in the body negative feedback so why you still have positive feedback? We only have three, and turn out we need them. So let's look at those three. One example, that's uh, we call the milk letdown reflex, only happens in female. After uh, the female have baby, the baby suck the nipple. So that's the stimulus. The stimulus is going to go through the receptor skin and go to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is going to release a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin has a lot of function. One function is called the milk letdown. It will go to the milk gland, so the breast. Breast outside is fat, inside is the milk gland. And the milk gland cannot release milk. So quickly the baby know, okay, the harder I work, the more food I get. So they're going to suck harder. And the more uh, work they put, and the more milk come out, it's a positive feedback. So in this situation, we need positive feedback. 
So most of your body feedback negative, and you have only three positive feedback. One we talk about that's the uh, the milk laid down reflex. The second one, blood clotting. So blood clotting you're gonna learn in AP two. That's when you are bleeding and the platelet platelet come out, and platelet is gonna touch the blood clotting factor and gonna trigger a chemical response. So they start from small, it's a positive feedback. So the clotting become bigger and bigger. Eventually they're gonna accumulate the great blood cell. And that's when you see the dry blood, they will become bigger and bigger. So it's a positive feedback, the clotting become bigger and bigger, so it can stop the bleeding. So it need to be a positive feedback. The third one is uh, giving birth, labor. So the start from the uterus contraction, and the contraction become stronger and become bigger. It won't stop until the baby come out. So this is another party feedback. Your body, you only have these three positive feedbacks. And the other, all the others, negative feedback, because negative feedback can maintain a stable environment. And these slides tell you your body want to have a stable environment. So they go through the regulation of negative feedback. And if this system fails, well, you're gonna get sick. Like we all experience it. We have a fever when the body temperature goes too high or your blood sugar go out of control, that could be diabetes. And your blood pressure go too high or too low, it can be high blood pressure or the update. So your body want to maintain a stable environment. Okay, that's it.